Greetings, dear friends. I present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Opel Corsa D. The drivetrain doesn't present very pleasant surprises. I'm sure that experienced Opel lovers will be alerted by the names of the series of gearboxes F13 Plus and F17, which will be discussed in the next paragraph. A large part of cars with automatic transmission are equipped with a simple robot isotronic based on the same manual transmission. But there is a pleasant surprise for those who love real automatic transmissions, a very sensible and quite reliable AF13 aka Isin 6040LE was installed with a 1.4 liter engine. Of course, you should not expect DSG dynamics from this server for from the four steps of this box, but it is strong, and it is extremely cheap to repair. There were no complaints about the CV joints and shafts, they are reliable in up to a run of 150 to 100,000, you only need to check the condition of the anthers. Damage to the shafts is more often associated not with wear, but with damage to the machine when hitting the suspension and changing the geometry of the subframe. But the manual transmissions of the F13 Plus and F17 series have several weak points. The most obvious but minor issue for owners is gear shift wear. It is here with the burble and it's subject to the accumulation of backlash. After 5 to 6 years of operation, the backlash in the lever hinge and the backlash of the helicopter makes gear shifting not very comfortable. Repair is inexpensive, the mechanism can be replaced with a similar one from the Nexia, which is very cheap. Or you can sort it out using non-standard mounting bolts. Most of all, through the oil seals of the drives and the breather of the switching mechanism is also a typical problem. Therefore, it is worth checking the oil level once a year, since there is a level plug here. Sometimes you have to change the oil, preferably at least once every 50,000. The box will benefit from this, because dirt accumulates at the very bottom, which worsens the working conditions of the differential. Hard dirt crumbles its teeth and can cause seizures and a subsequent breakage of the box body. The differential doesn't differ in strength, and the impress of wear products from the box into its old bed only contributes to the development of troubles. The design doesn't tolerate long-term slipping and jerking of traction, even fresh oil cannot save it. If you miss the moment when the noise from the satellite's fingers appears, they will weld and most likely destroy the box body. When buying, be sure to check the operation of the differential on the lift. To do this, lock one front-wheel drive on the raised machine and spin the second with the engine, and then turn off the engine and listen to the sounds of the box. An almost similar test is needed to determine the integrity of the secondary shaft bearings, only the wheel doesn't need to be blocked, bolts should rotate and the revolutions should be higher. Vibrations and hum from the box indicate that it will soon have to be changed. In especially advanced cases, the magnet on the cork will have a fur coat of steel fillings, but the sound test helps to identify the problem even if it is still at early stage or the box has been washed. The secondary shaft bearings are roller bearings and one in the plastic cage. So it leads when the oil is dirty or the box overheats. Overheating is not so difficult. The mechanics heats up with the lack of oil or prolonged movement at high speed, especially if there is a dull crankcase protection. Repairs are usually very expensive. You need to replace at least once of the shaft and all bearings. In total, it will take from 20 30,000 rubles only for parts. Often, damage also affects the box body, after which restoration will also require repair of the body on special equipment with the restoration of geometry. If you just put on the repair sleeve, then it is likely that the box will fail very quickly. When grinding the end switch of the secondary shaft for a repair bearing, it would seem easier to ensure the required accuracy, but the original bearing has a split plastic cage for a reason. An ordinary one simply will not crawl through the fifth gear. In general, boxes are most often changed to contract boxes rather than being repaired. With engines as weak as those on the Corsa, the boxes remain quite resourceful. Most of the cars up to runs of 150 to 100,000 km do not have any special problems with them, but there is always a risk. A contract units are, inexp are expensive because on Astro Vectra, the 1.6 liter in 1.8 liter engines, these manual transmissions break down very often and the demand for them is constant. For 1.4 liter in 1.6 liter turbocharged engines, a 6 speed gearbox of the M32 series was in store. It is noticeably more reliable than the Yonder series, has a cable drive, but the list of breakdowns is exactly the same, except the problems occur less often and they are repaired with great success. However, taking into account the style of movement in cars with such motors, the risks are likely to increase. And don't forget about the dual mass flywheel, the part is very expensive. Many criticize the Opel clutch hydraulic release, but in practice there is no particular problem with it. The resource of the original release bearing combined with the clutch slave cylinder in a single unit 
is more than sufficient, often more than the resource of the manual transmission itself. The clutch, if handled correctly, will easily travel hundreds of thousands of kilometers. The service life of the actuator varies from about 50-60 thousand kilometers to one and a half hundred. Officially, the unit is not being repaired. The replacement price is about 50,000 rubles, but the craftsmen have established recovery long ago, so you can try to take a chance and limit yourself to a significantly smaller amount. With the rarely carried out procedure for adapting the gripping point, at the same time the clutch resource decreases, the operation of the box becomes jerky and the already huge pauses during switching increase. Adaptations should be carried out at each maintenance, which means once every 10,000 km. Do not spare 500 rubles to connect TAC2 or get yourself an OP-COM, which will help to avoid problems in the future. Failure of the control unit also occurs, but this nuance belongs to the category of rare. Difficulties with the selector, failure of the frog of the brake pedal or violation of its adjustment are also encountered, but these are relatively inexpensive troubles. Much worse is the fact that this automatic transmission doesn't work normally. Compared to it, the work of the robot on the Lada Vesta is just as example of setting up this kind of device. Isotronic transmission is suitable for a leisurely movement around the city without serious climbs or on the highway, but it didn't work out a full replacement of the automatic transmission. By the way, there is no system for keeping the car on the rise. For a car with a robot, this is a serious drawback. You will have to act with a handbrake as taught in a driving school. The automatic transmission icing 6040LE, which was installed with 1.4 liter engines, is a pretty decent box. In the case of the Corsa, it is practically eternal. In any case, it can go through its 300,000 with regular maintenance easily. This is a lightweight version of 5040-5042LE series boxes, which deservedly received a title of the one of the most successful four-step boxes. The main fault are the wear of the forward packages and the third forward package at pile mileage, as well as contamination of the valve body. Among the racers, at least those who perceive Corsa as a racing car, you can also find wear and tear of the blocking linings of the gas turbine engine, which runs from 100 to 150,000 km. In this case, an intermediate repair with the replacement or restoration of the donut will be required. For more adequate owners, the resource of the lining is more than 200 to 150,000 and approximately corresponds to the resource of the box before the first intermediate repair with the replacement of the rubber parts, the most loaded solenoids and the revisions of the clutches. During long-term operation on old oil with overheating, there are more replacements. The forward drum, steel discs and much more can hit here. If you buy a car with this box, you shouldn't hope for indestructibility. It is imperative to check the condition of the oil and the presence of leaks on the oil seal of the gas turbine engine, which can be done with an endoscope. Opel has a lot of engines for the Corsa D. All of them are without any special frills. Cast iron block, simple injection, 4 valves per cylinder. The bulk of the motors belongs to the GM family O series. There are 3 and 4 cylinder engines of an especially small class. The working volume is from a liter for a 3 cylinder engine to 1.4 liters for a 4 cylinder version. The timing chain is driven by a chain and quite reliable. For 3 cylinder motors, it has a resource of 100 120,000 mileage, and for 4 cylinder motors, up to 200,000. The most powerful engine option is the 1.4 liter turbocharged engine. It develops 120 horsepower on the Corsa D, but is rare. It was installed only after the second restyling. But atmospheric 1.4 liter engines are well boosted. The version without the phase shifter, which was installed before the restyling, has a power of 90 horsepower and the version with the phase shifter all 101 power. It would be quite enough for a light car, but the Corsa weighs about 1300 kg, so the dynamics is still not amazing. With engines of 1.2 liters, the dynamics remains acceptable only in the range of 0 to 70 km per hour. The car frankly doesn't go further. Well, the liter motor is apparently even worse, although I personally haven't tested. Before styling, liter engines are Z10 XEP engines. After the first restyling, it began to comply with Euro 5 standards and received the designation A10 XEP. Engines with a volume of 1.2 liters are also divided into Euro 4 and Euro 5 versions, and in addition, there is a version of the IS engine with a phase shifter on the intake shaft. The simplest version with a capacity of 80 horsepower, this is Z12 XEL, aka A12 XEL. The 85 horsepower variant is already the A12 XEP. However, there is no need to expect miracles from it. In terms of thrust, it is inferior even to the Z12 XEL, since it is unnecessarily strangled by new environmental standards. 
The 1.4 liter engines have exactly the same features of the line. The Z14XEL was replaced by the A14EXEL and they by the A14XEP. In terms of dynamics, a motor with VVT is no better than the option without phase shifters, but it fits into the Euro 5 standards. The turbocharged A14 and EL, on the other hand, it is a different matter with 120 horsepower, quite allow you to drive quickly because the moment is almost one and a half times greater. No serious difficulties were noted behind the motors. By the time the Corsa D appeared, the engines had long been debugged, problems due to the low resource of the chain remained in the past. The resource of the piston group is about 200-300,000 km with normal care. Of course, all engines are prone to oil leaks, more precisely to fogging. Pollution doesn't affect oil consumption. The reason lies in the outdated crankcase ventilation system. But a weak thermostat is rather a plus. Due to weak seals in the assembly, initially high temperature motors after a year or two have an operating temperature of about 85-90 degrees, which can be considered the optimal operating mode. Unless warming up in winter takes longer than we would like. When replacing, you need to install thermostats from A14 and ET, A14 and EL, supercharged engines with the Opel Astra J. This way, the engine will be livelier and will warm up quickly. There are always risks, but they are not too great if you do not allow overheating of the engine compartment and the engine itself. I will note again, you need to change the candles at least once every 40,000 km and do not forget to clean the throttle. The cooling system is quite reliable and not overloaded, but it is worth closely monitoring the operation of the electric fans. If they play the full, then the hassle will be greatly added. Do not forget to change the expansion tank plug every 5 years and tighten it correctly, not all the way, but just very tightly, without fanaticism. Then the expansion valve in it will work normally and will not blow up your system. Special mention should be made of branded oils. Oils recommended for cars from the factory with DEX OS2 approval are generally oil, regardless of brand, prone to oil plug. This is not surprising, since these, this access is provided by the same set of additives, and the original will not help here. This is a very mediocre oil which harms the motor more than helps. Of the advantages, it can be noted that the lack of a tendency to cock piston rings and loyalty of the catalyst. Compliance with the tolerance on machines outside the warranty service is not only optional, but simply not recommended. Use quality oils without pitfalls. The rest of the motors are not particularly picky about oil, even popular 540 motors allow and work perfectly on them. Turbocharged 1.4 liter engines differ little from their atmospheric counterparts in terms of resource. Only a more complex intake system and the presence of a turbine can increase the number of minor troubles. As with any supercharged engine, failure of sensors and control systems can damage the hardware of the engine, so you need to monitor them carefully. The 1.6 T engine Z16LET A16LEL is completely different. It belongs to the family of motors GM Family 1 in the block of the second revision. By and large, this is a supercharged A16XEP, which was too much for a challenge for an old natural spite engine. The block was not originally designed for such power, so sometimes there were problems with cooling and the four cylinder and lubricating the liners of the force connecting rod. When using regular low viscosity oils and a slight increase in temperature due to contamination of the radiators or simply after a long standing in traffic jams, surprises in the forms of scoring or even piston breakage are possible. Despite the fact that the motor is easy to repair, has a reliable timing belt drive and cheap components, it is not suitable without modifications to satisfy sports ambitions. Diesel engines are very rare in our country. They have no particular problems, except that there are a lot of complaints about the operation of EGR. At the A12, 1.7 liter engine is generally considered one of the most successful small engine diesels in Europe. On this, information about the problems of the Opel Corsa D is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.